first time I've come and spoken at Johnson Wales or at other colleges because not that long ago, although really it was a long time ago, <laughs> back in 2003, I was in URC. And I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but knowing what you want to do and actually getting there are two very different things. And um, I've talked about a lot of different things. My background is in product development marketing, in brand marketing, retail marketing. Um, and when I kind of thought about what I would talk about tonight, what really came to mind is um, more like a TED Talk style. How many of you are watching TED Talks? Hopefully everybody in this room raises their hands. If you're not watching TED Talks, you should be. I didn't, we didn't have that as a resource back then. Um, I watch them all the time now, listening to podcasts. And um, really what I'm going to share with you today are kind of like some big beats, are things that I've learned over the last 10 plus years of my career. And things that will help you with any aspect of any career that you go into. Um, they're kind of like foundational learnings that aren't in the textbook. It's something that you have to learn by experience. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. This is definitely, um, I, it's an open door. I love when um, students ask questions about, about things in business because um, it's, it's great for me to be able to give back and help you guys understand what's after this room in this university when you're done here. So to start off, I'm going to talk about my background and kind of where I've worked, um, what I've done, what my experience is, is. So I'm going to give you kind of like a, a background on my, my resume. So we'll pretend I'm in a job interview and I'll give you the little spiel I give when I go in. Um, so when I started here at Johnson & Wales, I knew that I wanted to work in product development. And I specifically wanted to work with children. I worked at the daycare center. I babysat everybody. That was my passion. And I wanted to kind of take what I knew I wanted to do for work and kind of merge the two together. So I interned at Hasbro. Um, it was great. I worked in their marketing research lab. I got to test toys. Um, it was fantastic. And then I graduated. And I happened to graduate the same year that the economy crashed. So it was really hard to get a job coming out of, of school. And, and to be honest with you, thankfully, Johnson & Wales is such a, um, such a great university that it, it pushes all of you to work hard and to get experience now that a lot of other colleges don't do. So you're going to have a leg up already. But it's still really hard to get that first job. So um, to get my first job, I did something kind of a little unusual. And again, it was all about networking and who do you know. And I offered to babysit for a distant cousin who happened to be an executive vice president at Staples in marketing. So she didn't need any help. However, she needed a babysitter. And if you're going to trust somebody with your kids, then you're going to be very willing to help give back to them at the end of the day. And so that turned into kind of like an internship working for her. She ended up um, doing some consulting and, and leaving Staples. And she wanted to go work for a company called Musicland. Um, way before any of your time, but some of you who are a little bit older in the room might remember the music store when you were young growing up called Sam Goody. Anybody? Suncoast? <laughs> so um, they were a retailer out in Minnesota. And um, I got offered a job as her executive assistant to go move out there. Uh, they paid me nothing. And I took it. The company was failing, they were in bankruptcy, and they were, um, essentially their executive leadership was all in a consultancy because they weren't sure if they were going to be able to turn the business around. Uh, this is like on the brinks of Napster, who doesn't even really exist anymore, but this is when music was changing. People weren't buying CDs anymore, they weren't buying DVDs, they were starting to download them, they were starting to stream, and this entire business structure was changing because of that. Uh, so knowing that the company was going under. I moved out there for very little money. And what happened was really a great thing for me. Uh, they started laying people off because that's what happens when a company is going under. And it, it happens actually in good companies. It happens all the time. Being laid off is probably something that most of you will experience at one point in your career. It happens. Sometimes it's a great thing that happens as a result of it. Um, so for me, the experienced people, they couldn't afford, that had been at the company for a long time. So I was able to move up very quickly and learn and work really hard and just do the best that I could to help the organization. Um, and by doing so, I was able to get experience that I would have never gotten otherwise. 
Uh, so I ended up becoming a buyer for, of toys. And um, with that experience, it actually helped me land a job at KB Toys, which was another company that's no longer around that was going under. Um, but it helped get me back to the East Coast, closer to my family. And KB Toys was a little bit of an interesting thing for me. Um, my background is, is marketing. I'm creative. That's why I got into marketing. The one thing I always kind of struggled with was the financial piece of it and making sure you understand it. And I don't know, how many of you in the room struggle with that piece of it? You, it's okay. Raise your hand. I, I'm sure there's some of you who got into marketing because you, <laughs> you're not a science person. You're not a math person. Um, but I'm going to tell you this. Work on it. Work on it, work on it, work on it. Because at the end of the day, numbers are so important in marketing. It's the foundation of everything. And being able to learn it, uh, figure it out. Um, so I took this position at KB in finance something I knew I was going to hate, something I knew I wasn't going to be good at. Um, but it was fantastic because I took it and what I was able to do is I was able to turn my weakness into a strength. And I came out of KB Toys being one of the best in my business in terms of being able to analyze financial data, understanding it, um, providing recommendations, and I was far above my peers. So best thing I ever did hands down. I, I did it for a short period of time because I didn't like it, but I got what I needed to get out of it. And then I started doing what I really loved doing, which was product development. Um, from the time I was here, sitting in your seats, I, you know, I learned what a prototype was, and I was always fascinated about you know, getting from point A to point B. Like, how, do, how does this product get on the shelf? How does it get in people's hands? What's that whole life cycle? And I wanted to be a part of that on the development side. So I took a position at a local company called Durrell Juvenile Group. Um, they have Safety First brands. They work with Disney, um, Eddie Bauer, and working with all major retailers, Target, Walmart, Toys R Us, um, Babies R Us, pretty much you name it, and I've worked with them. Um, and it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Worked there for a while, um, working with, working on baby products with top licensors is challenging. Like there's a lot of stuff that you don't realize goes into it, but it was fantastic learning experience. Um, from there I did a couple of um, different things. I worked on some stuff for CBS, I worked on some stuff for Staples, and then more recently I spent the last five years at Summer Infant, again manufacturing baby products, and managing one of their largest um, own brands called Swaddle Me. Um, really taking it from a, an eight million dollar brand to a $35 million brand within five years. Um, so, why am I here? You all know I'm at Hasbro now. Um, kind of an interesting story. So, in doing all this, I sat down and kind of thought to myself, what do I really want to do with my life? Do I want to trek every morning? I live in Bristol. I was working in Woonsocket, so I was driving two to three hours a day in my car. I have a two and three year old little two two little boys at home, two babies. Um, so my life was kind of crazy and hectic, and, and marketing jobs are not easy. Like be prepared to work a lot of hours and, and put your hours in and put your time in. Um, but it doesn't always have to be that way. It doesn't. So coming back from J Wu and the culture that we have here, one of the best colleges that you can go to for entrepreneurship and learning how to make something for yourself. Um, so I actually asked to be laid off at summer. So they laid me off, they gave me severance. I started my own business while I was getting paid from somebody else. Um, took a contract job at Hasbro to continue to pay my bills <laughs> while I was starting something else. And um, actually my website launched today and I'll go through that in a little bit, but that's kind of you know, my background and, and where I've been and, and what I've done. Um, so now I'm gonna kind of talk to you a little bit about what I've learned through that whole process. So the first thing is know your facts. Know your facts, know your facts. Be the best at knowing your facts. When I worked at KB Toys, I had a manager who wasn't a very nice person, but he gave me the best piece of advice I've ever gotten in my career. And he said to me, Erin, you know, what you need to do is you need to poke holes in everything that you do. Because if you don't poke holes in what you do, somebody else will. And if you can poke holes in what you do, 
you can get up and you can present anything, you can sell anything. Because anytime anybody has a challenge for you or some kind of a concern that comes up, you've already thought of it and you have an answer. And that was literally the best thing I've ever heard in my whole life. And it's true. Any single thing that you do, if you know your stuff and you, you did your homework, poke holes in it. Be hard on yourself. Be harder on yourself than anybody else. When we start and look at, you know, things that happen or you hear about this recall or, or some, some other kind of a mistake, like right now with social media, it's like, you know, was this politically correct or whatever it is. Lots of times it's because marketing is very fast paced and people rush. And people fall in love with what they do. People are very passionate about what they do. But you can't love what you do so much that you can't find fault in what you've done. Because we all make mistakes. And um, it's not even about making mistakes. It's about getting better. And it's about improving whatever it is that you're working on. But be detailed. Um, so working in marketing and product development, it kind of comes from two different places. So we work on consumer input, which from my perspective was, was talking to moms. So I went out and I talked to moms, but I didn't just talk to moms. I went to the park and I watched the moms in their stroller and I watched how they interacted with their baby. And I watched how they could only ever use one hand, so we called it the one hand mom. And I went on Facebook and I joined all the Facebook groups and I spied on them and watched how they talked about products and how they interacted with brands. Because all of that is out there for you. You have more resources at the tips of your fingers than ever before. I had focus groups. I would ask friends and family. So when I went into a meeting to give a recommendation or poke holes in something or, or you know, have a great idea that we should work on something new, I came in knowing all of this up front and being able to really articulate the why behind what I was asking for. And not just you know go in and say, hey, I think this is a great idea because I think it's a great idea. Um, facts have a lot of power behind them. And, and really knowing your subject matter can really, it can make the difference between success or failure. So um, that's a huge piece of, huge piece of what you have to do. And be passionate. Every, every manager, every CEO, they love people who are passionate about what they do. It's not easy to find a job that you're passionate about. I've been very, very, very lucky my whole career to love what I was doing. Most people hate their job. It's called work for a reason. It's not called fun. It's called work. Um, but find what you're passionate about. If you like sports, try to figure out how you can get into sports marketing. Or if you're into music, get into music marketing. Um, if you're into culinary, but you want to do marketing too, get into food marketing and, and brands like Procter and Gamble and um, and things like that. But find your niche, and when you find what you're passionate about, when you find that niche, everything else, it, the finding the facts and becoming the expert, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Um, again, like I said, know your numbers. Know your numbers. I am really not good at math. You could ask me right now to add you know, 36 plus 42, and I would honestly struggle with it. But I know how to use Excel. I know how to use Excel, and I know how to analyze any number faster, better than almost everybody I work with. So use your tools. Figure out how to do it. Pivot tables, VLOOKUPs, write those down. Pivot tables, VLOOKUPs. Pay attention to those in class, because if you don't use them, you will forget how to do it. And really make sure that you understand how to take the information that you have from moms and your numbers, your, your data, and tie all that together. The other thing that I did too in terms of knowing my facts is I knew my competitors. So I would walk into Babies R Us, Target, Walmart. I would walk that baby aisle. I can tell you right now, I could walk into a baby store and I would say, that product is new. That product had a price change across probably 15 to 20 different competitor brands. I knew my market. I was in there all the time. Every time I went to the store, I checked that aisle. Nobody knew it better than me. And I could sit in a meeting with other teams that products that I didn't work on and be able to give, provide them information. And that's powerful, being able to know that and being able to speak from that. And it's not hard to do, right? It's not hard. You go shopping, you just take a look and you try to, you try to learn it. Again, it, own it. Has anybody ever heard of, this is, uh, this is, I can never say her name right, Kim or Luna. Anybody ever heard of her? Okay, so she's an entrepreneur, 
I encourage you to write her name down because you'll never remember it because I always have struggled trying to find it when I look it up. Listen to some of her podcasts. She went from being on, I think she was on welfare, to being a multi-million dollar business owner. You want to know how she did it? She listened to podcasts. She read books, guys. That's it. She listened to podcasts and she read books. And she became the expert. She became the expert on something. That's all she did. And because she's the expert, she's got a million dollar brand. Promoting herself and teaching other people what she learned. It doesn't sound hard, right? You're reading books now. You listen to podcasts, you're driving in the car, put a podcast on. It, it doesn't sound that hard, right? So be the expert. I have, um, I have somebody in my family who, she studies flies, okay? She studies flies. She studies flies for a living. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? Well, guess what? How many people in the world do you think study flies? Not that many. Not that many. So you know what she did? She picked something that she was going to be an expert in, and she's going to be very successful at studying flies because she's one of the only ones that does it. So um, just, you know, it's all about ownership, and this is something anybody here, you can do this now. You don't have to wait till you graduate. Um, whatever it is that you're working on, whatever it is that you're doing, just own it. Build it, break it, make it better. This goes back to what I just talked about a minute ago about poking holes in things. Um, you know, again, lots of times, especially working in product development, working in design, designers are very, um, they, they fall in love with what they do. They, they're artists, right? And, and it's kind of difficult to work with sometimes, but you have to be the one on your team in marketing because marketing owns everything. So when you walk out of here, almost every organization that you go to, marketing are the ownerships. We own pricing, right? We own the research. We own all the product development and design because we're the ones saying, hey, this is what the consumer needs. So we're the voice of the consumer. Therefore, we own it all. So make sure that you are hard on your teams. You're, you're encouraging your teams to be hard on their own work. And then you make it better. And that's where the magic happens. That's where you get the Steve Jobs and the Apples and all of those really um, powerful things that happen in this kind of in, um, in product development and really in anything. And then when you're doing that, though, you need to learn the difference between being objective and subjective. So sometimes I'll have people come in and let's say I've got a blanket on the wall. And half the people will say, I don't like pink. And the other half the people will say, I love pink. So what are you going to do? Well, you know people are going to like pink. There's people out there that like pink. There's people that don't. That's not really, that's not really you know, important. That's not an important thing I'm going to use to make my decision. But if somebody came in and said, Oh, this blanket is really rough. I don't. I wouldn't want to put my baby on that. That's an issue, right? That's something I want to fix, and I want to make sure I improve upon that because that's something that could affect everybody. So making sure that you understand the difference when you're doing this and when you're working with your peers is really important. And then learn when something is polarizing and when to take that risk. Sometimes when you're coming up with something that's that's really awesome or even if it, you're working on a direct marketing campaign and you've got some really out-of-the-box idea that's never been done before, let me, let's talk about subscription boxes, right? That wasn't around a couple of years ago. Somebody said, hey, let's put a bunch of makeup in a box and see if people will buy this every month. And they made a lot of money by taking that risk. And now everybody has subscription boxes. You can get food, you can get toys, you can get just about anything. So learn when something is polarizing, and if people said, hey, I don't think I want my makeup, I, wouldn't, I want to pick out my own makeup. But some people are like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea because I want to try different things. You have to learn when that pendulum swings and where your sweet spot is to find um, how to make your decisions. So this is a perfect example for build it, break it, make it better. So Swat on Me is a brand that I worked on at Summer. This is the brand that I told you um, it grew from eight feet at Babies R Us to a 20 foot run. It was actually the single largest brand statement, single largest brand statement in US retail marketing. So that's pretty, that's pretty impactful. There was nobody else. You can go into a Target and find uh, a Lego run that was Lego branded only and say that that was 20 feet or a whatever, Columbia or General Mills. They all have sub brands, right? Everybody else uses that brand. You might find companies that have that, but not a brand to reach that far. Um, there's a few out there now that copied, but 
Um, so, but looking at sweat, I mean, so it was very successful. So why change it, right? What's broken? Well, a lot's changed, right? The mom has changed. How we talk to her has changed. Instagram wasn't out when we shot this mom and this baby, which looks really, it looks outdated, right? Doesn't that look really old? Um, so you have to change. You have to evolve. You can't just stay still just because something is, is working, right? So we sat down and we talked to moms. We figured out what they wanted. We figured out what brands they felt were aspirational. We looked at how we could change it. And this is, this is the after. And this is something that Summer is launching right now. Um, but really looking at, you know, to go from this to that is pretty demonstrative, right? But sometimes you have to make those decisions. You have to get your facts, pull everything together, so that way you can keep pushing forward in the right direction. Last point I have is to start something. Just start something. It doesn't take that long. It just takes a little bit of willpower, right? Like you just have to do it. So again, be passionate. Everything comes down to passion. Be well-rounded. You know, if you get an opportunity in a company and somebody in the XYZ department needs help, help them because you'll learn how to do X, Y, and Gs. You'll learn how to do their job. And then you know how to do your job and their job. And then when you go to interview for a different position somewhere else, you can say, oh, well, I know how to do that and I know how to do that. And it's like, oh, well, that's somebody I want to hire. Be the expert. We already talked about that. Be nice. We didn't talk about this. This is really important. It is a really, really small world. We just talked about a connection that we didn't even know that we had. Um, I bet you if, if, we played the t you know, if we played the six degrees of separation, we'd probably find a bunch of connections in here we didn't know we had. And um, in the industry, you know, don't ever burn your bridges. One thing I was really not good at was I moved around a lot, and I didn't have LinkedIn early on in my career. I didn't do a good job of keeping in touch with everybody. It's important. You remember the people who will just drop you a line a couple times a year and say, hey, hi, how are you doing? Um, and, and honestly, now with LinkedIn and Facebook, it's a lot easier to do that. I didn't have that tool. Uh, but keep in touch, network, and just always you know, be nice to people. It's hard when you are in a marketing position and you are the owner, right? Because you're not their boss. Design reports to design, and packaging reports to packaging, and everybody engineering reports to engineering. But you have the final say. So you want these people to like you. And I know, you know, I've always heard in the past, like, I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to work. Yeah, but if people like you, they're gonna, they're gonna listen to you a little bit more. They're gonna be more willing to, when you have something urgent that comes up, stay till six o'clock to hit your deadline because you need them to do that. So it's really important to make sure that you're being nice, you're being kind, and you, you do wanna make friends with these people because you might work with them again down the road. I've got a couple of guys that I've worked with at Summer that I've literally worked with in three different companies. Three. And we all help each other get jobs different places because of that. So it's really important. And then do what you believe in. So um, I talked to you a little bit about how I decided that I didn't want to work corporate anymore. I was done with 60 hours a week and, and being crazy. So I sat down one night and I was watching Shark Tank, which... I, I, I'm sure, I hope most of you watch Shark Tank again, right? Shark Tank fans, watch Shark Tank. Even if, even if you're not interested in it, just watch it a couple times. You'll learn a few things. Um, I didn't like watching Shark Tank because I manufacture products for a living. This is what I do. I work for big brands. I do this. And then I see some like mom inventor come on there, and they're giving her lots of money. So I would get kind of aggravated. So I sat there one night, and I said, well, what makes that mom any different from me? Because I always told myself, well, if, you won, if I won the lottery, I would start my own business because I know how to manufacture things. I know how to do product development. I've done it for big companies for a really long time. What makes them any different from me, right? Well, they probably didn't win the lottery. They can't all be rich, right? Like, not all, they can't all be rich. Some of them might have a little more money in the bank than I do. However, they can't all be rich. So what did they do different than what I was doing at the time? They just started something. They just started it. They were passionate about it and they figured it out. And they didn't even know half of what I know. I know how to I know how to find factories in China. I know how to make things. I know what quality testing we need to do. I know how to get into retailers. Um, so today I actually launched my website for my own brand. It's baby product. It's called Mama Love. So it's still kind of in beta phase. Um, so next week I finished my contract at Hasbro. I will be looking for another contract because 
I have to pay my bills while I'm still, but until this makes some money. But it's going to be a while, but you know what? In a couple of years, I could make way more than I was making before. So, and that's, that's out there. That opportunity is out there. And the millennial generation is more likely and more interested in buying from small shops. Instagram, there's people out there on Instagram who are creating entire businesses off of one social media platform. Not even all of them, just one of them. So think about how powerful that is. And if you can own that and you learn how to navigate those systems, you can do just about anything. Oh, uh, look at that. I showed up first. Yay. SEO, right? SEO. You got to learn that kind of stuff. So brings a good point. I didn't know anything about SEO. I didn't know anything about digital marketing because I had other people who did that for me, right? But what I knew is moms were looking for, I knew, I knew about baby, right? I knew about baby. I knew about brands. I knew what she was looking for. I had all my facts. I've been doing this for so many years. I knew how to reach her. I knew that she is starting to shop on Instagram, like I just said, and I knew what she wasn't getting, right? So I found that hole. And what she wasn't getting was something that was a little different than what she can buy at Babies R Us because there's a certain mom who wants to buy that aspirational thing, especially when she's having a baby, right? Like, it's like planning your wedding. Like, you get really excited about all the products that are happening and you, you plan for certain things. So, um... Mama Love is really all about my story, and that's a whole long story for another day. Um, but it's powerful, and it's a way that I can connect to other moms. It won't make sense. I don't think it, probably none of you in here have kids, right? Any, anybody have kids? No? Just you. Just you. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's a, that's a good thing for the time being. <laughs> um, but I'm sure you brothers and sisters and family members that have little ones, um, so it's really all about connecting a community of, of moms and really, and really pulling together uh, the digital aspect and, and really helping create a community with a brand. So it's not just a brand, but it looks pretty good, right guys? So we started today with, our, with a blog post, which is really emotional, um, but emotions sell products, they sell brands. And um, we're starting to list some stuff in our store. And, um, you know, in order for me to do this, we literally went out. I went to Joanne's. I bought fabric. I sew blankets. I didn't even know how to sew blankets. I faked the whole thing. I got a website. I, I, got, I begged a friend going back to being nice to people. I had a friend who was an amazing photographer. She taught me how to take pictures, too. So I got this photo shoot together literally within, like, a week and a half and got everybody on board and now we're working with some factories so I got everybody to believe into it and now I'm working with some factories that I've worked with in the past out of China and actually bringing in new products which you see here is is what I bought at Joanne's fabric store I just went and sold it and if I didn't tell you that I think it, it probably looks a little I hope it looks a little bit better than I just went to Joanne's like you wouldn't know that it looks like like a real brand right but I just started something so um, that's the biggest thing, you know. If you want to, if you want to work in your in your sweats every day, then you know you can do that. People do that nowadays. Not all the time. You still have to, you know, dress up sometimes. I see a lot of you are dressed up nice, which is great. But you can do that. You have an opportunity to be different and not not do the nine to five, not um, not sit in a cubicle or in an office with you know low lighting and not seeing the light of day, and more so than ever. So figure out what you're going to do, get your experience, learn what you need to do, stay home as long as you can when you graduate so you can save your money to do something like this. I wish I had done that, um, but that's really it. Any questions?